but they're up against a powerful political force that doesn't want to see citizens expand. Since 2019, when DeSantis was sworn in, the insurance industry has donated nearly $10 million to DeSantis and the Republican Party. Boom, there it is. This is why people like Ron DeSantis are not good for homeowners. Because he wants to partner with the private insurance companies, with the corporate parasites that want to have you buy the balls. That's who Ron DeSantis is. And yet some of you guys want to keep him in office? It's not working out for most homeowners. And then guess what? It's going to, and if it doesn't affect you directly, it will affect people around you and then it will affect you directly. Nationwide is not on your side. So as we know, there is a collapse incoming when it comes to really housing insurance in the state of Florida. Housing insurance really is in a kerfuffle as we see in this article, well, this presentation from More Perfect Union. Those of you who are homeowners need to keep this in mind. Some of you already know what's going on. But one of the questions I actually have for you is, did you know that we had a insurance public option for home insurance here in Florida? Not many people knew that, but we're going to be talking about that and more when it comes to the insurance companies really stiffing homeowners here in Florida. Let's get into this. I found this uh very interesting to get into uh, talking about the Florida insurance industry out of more perfect union. We're going to be pausing from time to time to react and also bring out different points, but let's go. We got told we had to move in a hurry. <laughs> Times of distress. So I have a tendency to be rather sarcastic <laughs> because I always say I'd rather laugh than cry. And, uh, that was kind of a one of those situations where you're literally throwing all your belongings to the street at one time. You're not being evicted and your wife's not kicking you out of the house. <laughs> Maurice Gutierrez lives in Naples, Florida. His house flooded in 2022 when Hurricane Ian made landfall on the southwest coast of Florida. One of the strongest September hurricanes to strike the U.S. in decades. A significant storm. Again, a category four. The street will never be the same. You know, trees gone, neighbors gone, homes are gone. And uh, here I am today rebuilding because I, I won't move. I love this place. A year later, Maurice got a notice from his insurance company. They were doubling his premium to $7,500 a year. The year after that, it was up to a staggering $9,000 a year. Now on a fixed income retiree, that's not chump change. So Maurice decided to drop his wind coverage. Now he's one of hundreds of thousands of Floridians that are going bare. That means they're living with little to no homeowner's insurance in a state that is set to have a record hurricane season this year. And what's going on in Florida under Governor Ron DeSantis is a warning. This is what happens when a government capitulates entirely to the insurance lobby. We went to Florida to talk to other homeowners like Maurice. We found out that residents are being priced out of coastal communities and sketchy insurance companies are thriving under DeSantis's policies. It's essentially trickle down economics, but for insurance companies. And the housing insurance crisis isn't just a problem in Florida. People around the Bay and across the state are now being told their homeowner insurance policies will not be renewed. State Farm says they're discontinuing coverage for some customers. Several major carriers are pulling out of Iowa and other states. Experts warn the collapse in the homeowner's insurance industry could take down the entire housing market with it. Should those systems start to collapse or should that business model collapse, it could take down the entire American economy with it. It could take down the global economy. That's huge. That should be concerning to all of you. The fact that we have these people, these corporate parasites that are making money off of the insurance on your homes. And now that when you actually do need them, they're saying, you know what? You're too risky. We're pulling out. 
Think about that. Think about uh, if you live in California, you have the wildfires that could be happening. Think about if you live in Tornado Alley within the Midwest. Think about whether you're in the the north of Midwest, whether you're in places like Wisconsin, Michigan, right? You could be, you know, living there and, you know, you have to face big blizzards, right? Or think about whether you're in places like Maine. Think about what happened with Superstorm super Sandy if you live in New York. Think about that. And now your housing insurance either goes up so much that you can't afford it, so you have to drop them, or they drop you. And imagine if that happens to enough people. Ah, boy. Let's continue. The water came up to this line right here. At first, it's like, it can't get much worse. It can't get much worse. And then it's like, oh, my God, when is it going to stop? Maurice has lived in Florida for most of his life. Raised in Miami, so hurricanes to us are, as far as I'm concerned, a weather event. You know it's coming. You prepare. You don't get complacent, but you get used to them. Nearly. Now, what he says is true, because those of you who live in Florida, I don't get concerned with hurricanes until it's a category. Everybody's like, oh, my God, a hurricane's coming. And I'm like, what category is it? A cat one? Oh. Hurricane party. <laughs> Cat one, eh. It's like, okay, here's, here's how it goes. Category hurricane, meh. Category two. Category three. Category four. Category five. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's basically how it is in Florida. Just a little Florida logic for y'all. But cat ones and twos, yeah, we don't start paying attention until it's a category three. One out of five Floridians is like Maurice. They've been forced to cut back or go without insurance. One out of five, that's 20% of homeowners. That's a, that's a lot. That option allows me to manage my own risk. Okay, let's back up and talk about how insurance actually works. Insurance companies determine premiums for you based on risk assessment. Generally speaking, the higher the risk, the higher your premium goes. They assess risk factors like the quality of building materials in your house, your neighborhood, what kind of dog breed you own, and of course, natural disasters. So, you know, if you have a wildfire risk in California and a hurricane risk in Florida, it, those two things are supposed to balance themselves out. But as the planet warms and natural disasters increase, the insurance business model hasn't been keeping up. And what's happening is that the risks of uh, some of those perils, uh, of climate-driven perils in particular, are increasing so much that the insurance companies are having a difficult time making the profit that they've always expected that they will make. In response- Now, for all those people who are like, oh my God, climate change isn't real. Well, you're feeling in your pocket. Because, and why? It's because they see the real world results of it on your home. So fighting climate change is actually fiscally responsible for you. Are you paying attention now? So when you have people, especially candidates that are running, especially outside the two-party system, that talk about fighting climate change, and I'm not talking about these the, the fighting climate change that the Democrats talk about, because that's, that's BS, right? because they're gonna still keep on using exploitation in order to do green uh, industry jobs and things like that, which in reality, they're still gonna be exploiting people. And I'm talking about the real people who are for fighting climate change. That's what I'm talking about. We have candidates like that, then you realize, well, they're actually trying to fight so that my, money doesn't get funny when it comes to protecting my home. <laughs> but a minute says cat one in Orlando is rain. Yep, basically. Let's continue. 
months, major national carriers are raising rates and cutting policies. Today, 12% of people in the United States don't have homeowners insurance. Up the coast in Fort Myers, Florida, is Priscilla O'Hara. Hi, I'm good. How are you? She stayed in her home during Hurricane Ian, just like Maurice. My, my son and I stood at the front door looking out the glass window and watched the rivers right over there, watched the water coming up, and here it's coming, nothing we could do. Here it's coming. And then the wind changed in about 10 feet from the house, and back out it went. Her roof was damaged, but when she filed the claim, her insurer, State Farm, told her that her policy didn't cover wind. I, I don't think we really realized that we were not covered for wind damage. Did not. Hang on. You mean to tell me in the state of Florida that you do not have coverage for wind damage, that they don't give you wind damage coverage automatically? Y'all see why I don't like private insurance. Y'all see why? <sighs> Burn capitalism with fire, people. Please. 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 Goodness gracious. I know that. I mean, hurricanes are wind. The next year, State Farm dropped her. They said her house, which was built in 1976, was too old to insure. I've been with them for 40 years, probably. It was a total shock, yeah. Oh, okay. This they dropped her because she, they said that the house was too old. These people going to hell. <laughs> this goes back well he paid this uh, in September of 2022 $881 so I mean they had our premiums all those years went in their bank account State Farm ended that year with a net worth of $131 billion like a good neighbor State Farm is there yeah they're not good and they are not neighborly in the least at all not in the slightest. And the thing is, you got to think about all those premiums that were paid month after month for years and years and years, all for them to say, no, nah, we're not going to pay for you. They squeeze that woman dry for all that she's worth. If you, let's say, hypothetically, you're paying 500 bucks a month for a year, right? Your premiums are 500 bucks per month. That's $6,000 you paid for the entire year, right? Now, let's do that over 10 years. And let's say you don't have any big weather events that you need to get a premium on or pay for at all within a decade. That's, that's not out of the realm of possibility here in Florida, right? Because hurricanes can come, but it may not be that bad in you may not have any wind damage, so you don't need to make a claim, right? So over 10 years, $6,000 a year, that's $60,000 you paid to insurance over a 10-year period, right? And let's say the 11th year, you may have some wind damage, so you probably are going to have to pay, let's say, four thousand dollars five thousand dollars right so you pay four five thousand dollars for the damage to your roof you know and you put out the deductible and let's say they approve it meanwhile that fifty five thousand dollars that they have gotten out of you is in their pockets they do not you do not get that back at all or let's say that they say no and they don't approve you for that. That's $60,000 that they made off of you for six, for, I'm sorry, for 10 years. That they made off of you. And then they run away. And they got all that money from you. Now, times that by 10, 20, 30, 40,000 different customers. They 
got the country by the throat. They got all y'all by the throat. If you're a homeowner, yeah. That's the private insurance company for homeowners insurance. The roof damage cost her over $6,000, which she paid out of pocket. Okay, you can tell a little bit. There's a little different shade. It cost us $6,292. $6,292 to have it replaced. Priscilla shopped around, but she couldn't find an insurer that she trusted. I, I want a company that I know something about, not some company I've never heard of before. That seems smart. Yeah. If we had that roof damage, I could do it again, I guess. Don't want to, but I guess I could. So what exactly happens to someone if they don't have insurance? If you don't have insurance for your home, you might lose your mortgage or you might face higher mortgage rates. And worse, if you have a, a disaster and your home is uninsured, then you lose the value of that home or you face that out-of-pocket cost to repair that house, which could be hundreds of thousands of dollars or more. So it can be absolutely bankrupting. Priscilla and Maurice have both paid off their homes. But if you have a mortgage, you have to have homeowner's insurance. So for people who can't find insurance, Florida has something unique, a state-run, not-for-profit backstop that is actually the number one insurer in the state. Citizens Property Insurance. Citizens Property Insurance. A state-run insurer um, called Citizens Insurance. Citizen Did you know that this existed? A state-run and owned home insurance company. Did you know that? that exists in Florida? If you're not a homeowner, then you didn't know. I didn't know, I'm not a homeowner. A lot of us aren't homeowners. So we don't know about things like this, but it actually does exist. This is a homeowner's insurance public option that exists in the state. So let's continue. This is property insurance was established in 2002, 10 years after Hurricane Andrew hit Miami. It's absolutely for sure. No question about it. It is going to happen tonight. Hurricane Andrew was at the time, the costliest hurricane in Florida's history. And it hit the insurance industry hard. And the state was facing the prospects of incredibly precipitous economic decline, and they wanted to avoid that. In 1992, Miami was a city of almost 2 million people. Lawmakers didn't want to see the city decline. So in 1993, they held an emergency legislative session and created what would later become Citizens Insurance. And uh, it was wildly successful. It did provide insurance to people who couldn't buy it on the commercial market. But more importantly, it reversed the flow of people uh, leaving the state. It canceled the possibility of that exodus, and it led to enormous growth. Citizens was supposed to be the insurer of last resort. But then the state was hit with a record hurricane season in 2004 and again in 2005. As more parts of Florida became uninsurable, citizens expanded to protect more homeowners. Now, 1.2 million Florida residents have public instead of private insurance. This backstop is important. If you start to lose insurance in a community, then the home values will drop as a result of that. And as those home values drop, you'll see people start to move away from that community and the tax base decreases. And as the tax base decreases, you have less money for schools, you have less money for infrastructure and fixing potholes and roads and so on. And you start to see this sort of spiral of decline, this negative momentum. A study from the... So it is a domino effect, right? This is why one of the reasons why I say that, you know, education should not be tied to property taxes because that's one of the great, that's one of the things that actually uh, really just stifles the community as having to tie to property taxes. To be honest with you, it all should be federal funded, just like Department of Defense schools, but that's another conversation. But the thing is, it's like, let's go back to this because this is something that a lot of people do not regard as much. So, so it says uh, tax base decreases, less money for schools, less money for infrastructure. 
Uh, so, for instance, you know, once the infrastructure degrades, once the education degrades, then guess what? That's when you get what you call the hood. And so then the education rates go down, the buildings become more dilapidated, the school, you know, the infrastructure becomes more dilapidated, then people start to leave, really. And then the small businesses start to suffer because there's not as many people buying within that community. So then more low people become more lower income. All because insurance companies do not want to insure the area because it's too high risk. Then the crime goes up. And once the crime starts to go up because people are more in poverty, then guess what? Then it's even more risky for insurers to insure that home in that area. Or they will increase their premiums so that they can be insured. And so then it's a it's a yeah, snowball effect. And so when you do have a public provided homeowners insurance, well, then it's not based on profit. If it's not based on profit, then guess what? They're not then they're not really going to be looking at risk assessment as much because they're not going to try to be making money off of it. It's just to make sure that your home is insured. Really, instead of it being incentivized by profit, it's incentivized for people to keep their homes. Oh, isn't that interesting? So, let's continue because if you have that in there, if you still keep to continue to keep people insured, then that means that they don't leave. Now we can talk about later about how we, you know, we should just be funding schools, you know, across the board equally without having it to be a uh, burden on, you know, property taxes. We can talk about that, but it would keep the money for schools in place. It would keep the money for the infrastructure to keep in place. And then more people will stay, which means that more small businesses will be able to stay, which means that more people will be able to make more money, meaning that the community would be more stabilized, but I digress. Decline this negative momentum. A study from the Environmental Defense Fund calculated where the most money could be lost in tax revenue due just to increase risks of flooding. Homes in coastal Florida, they determined, could be overvalued by as much as $10 billion a year. And this whole video, you're thinking, well, luckily I don't live in Florida. Here's the national map. But the public model has a major flaw. It's put more people in the path of risk, so it's increased their economic vulnerability. But it's also affected the way Americans vote. It's affected climate policy on a state level and on a federal level because constituents are not expressing urgency uh, to enact policy to address climate change, to lower those risks, because they don't feel those risks. None of this has stopped people from moving to the coasts. In 2023, a year after Hurricane Ian's devastation, Lee County's population still grew. But the people who have been able to rebuild and afford their homes has changed. Fort Myers Beach is a coastal island just west of Fort Myers. It's been a popular resort town and home for retirees since the 1950s. Ian was the costliest hurricane to ever hit Florida. The Category 4 storm did $112 billion in damage, and Fort Myers Beach was one of the hardest hit. A third of the homes on the island were destroyed. But the town is rebuilding. Everywhere you look, there are cranes and scaffolding and large RVs where former residents are staying. We met with Lori Curry, a real estate agent who has sold property on the island since 2004. I think when you drive here, you see the obvious changes from its original days when it was mainly a retirement community and a uh, little less affordable for some of the original owners. Lori says a lot of the smaller retiree homes that were built in the 50s and 60s were damaged and they're being replaced by rentals bought by wealthy investors. The people that came and bought at a, a discounted price, they knew what they were doing. Many former residents struggled to rebuild. A report from Bloomberg said the- So- Building on Fort Myers Beach, especially with the new federal and state building codes, can easily start at a million dollars. Eight out of 10 homes sold the first year after Ian were purchased with cash. It turned out that Lori and her husband had their own fight with their insurance company. So let's go here. So 
this also explains a lot of all uh, all these homes that are being bought up by corporations like BlackRock, for instance. Uh, they're buying up all these homes and then renting them out for money is because that the, the, the value of these homes been depreciated because people can't afford their insurance. So the homes depreciate in value. So the homes aren't valued that much. So these people, these corporations buy up the homes for pennies on a dollar, essentially. And then uh, they're able to rent them out and make these all this money. And now you're turning into a nation of renters. So, yeah. Let's uh, continue. <sighs> Company after Hurricane Ian. Oh, they I canceled no us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, they canceled. Yeah, they said they weren't going to, and then they did. It had roof damage, and initially their insurer Edison wouldn't cover it. They ended up taking the company to court. They fought us tooth and nail the whole way. So that's the mentality of the insurance companies. You know, they like to take your money, but they don't like to pay it off when there's a risk involved. Lori and Ron say they were lucky. Because they had an attorney, they were able to get a new roof, and the cost of the attorney and public assessor was covered by Edison. And that's the problem is some people are very reluctant and reticent, and they're still suffering. Oh, yeah, there, there's a lot of foreclosures. They're walking away. So Fort Myers Beach is an extreme example, but Florida is in the middle of a housing crisis and rising prices are impacting renters and first time home buyers the most. We, we have been in an affordable housing crisis for years in Florida. The insurance crisis is making it far worse. You might think the role of the public option, citizens, would be to keep these costs down, but there's a problem with that. Since the creation of citizens property insurance, the insurance lobby has pushed to keep rates high. The emphasis should always be to try to get those people into the market where they're paying the full rate and not counting on their uh, neighbors uh, to pay part of the tab for them. The state initially required that citizens be non-competitive, even as insurance companies kept raising rates more and more. The insurance industry used to love citizens, right? They love the idea of a, of a last resort insurer where they can just sort of like leave the dregs, the most risky and unprofitable claims off on the public while doing the rest of the stuff themselves. Now, think about the public option that the the Democrats were pushing for, you know, Medicare, like what people who just were saying, Medicare for all who want it, right? So this is basically the homeowner's version of that, where you have two tiers of people. You have the people who are can't afford the private insurance that get the better Cadillac insurance, right? The good Cadillac insurance. And then you pass off and put off uh, the people that you don't want, the, the, the undesirables onto the public option. So this is basically the same thing when it comes to homeowners insurance. And that's what the uh, insurance companies like. Because the thing is, like the, the ones that are with higher risk, meaning that you would actually have to pay out insurance claims. And they don't want to claim to do that. So, you know, if you have a house that's fairly new that has, you know, everything up to code and everything up to date, what that means that you're not you're going to be less likely to have to pay out any type of claims on it. Meaning you can just keep collecting premiums and premiums and premiums all the live long day. So then you're making as much money as you possibly can because you don't have to pay anything on it. Same thing goes for things like healthcare insurance, right? Uh, the private insurance, this is why they like to insure people who are young, fit, and healthy, because then that means that they can keep collecting somebody who's 21 years old, who doesn't smoke, who works out quite regularly. Well, that's banking. That's bank, because then they can keep collecting the premiums each month off of that person. And so then when push comes to shove, they're making all that money. Versus somebody like me that's 40 years old, that's on kidney dialysis. Well, they don't want to touch me with a 10-foot pole because that means that, oh, well, this person is going to be at a hospital more regularly. And if they're in a hospital more regularly, that means we're going to have to put out and pay more for this person's care. So then they don't want to have me under their insurance. That's why they're so happy that I'm on Medicare. Or they would do that for people who are on a public option for Medicare for all who want it, right? So then they can still keep making their millions of dollars, but they can pass off to poor people onto the public option, whether it's for healthcare or for, you know, essentially 
house insurance. 2007, after those record hurricane years, the state changed the rules. Citizens didn't have to be more expensive than private carriers. Right now, now these private companies are taking on all the safe risks where they are assured a profit and passing all the bad risk on to the state via citizens' property insurance company. The insurance. So the bad risk being that they are now having to pay out the premiums. I'm sorry, not pay out the premiums pay out the, the insurance claims uh, and it's on the back of essentially the back of the taxpayers. Right. And so they don't want to it all to be placed on them. So it's, this would essentially be the same thing with a public option when it comes to if you had a healthcare public option. Right. You would have all the bad risk placed on the federal government or if you did it through the state, you want the state government and more money will be pumped out through the state via taxpayers onto the people you know on, on our backs you know to pay versus all the the more or less risk people would be uh on you know in the private sector but they'd be paying out less right and they'd be making all this profit so <clears throat> essentially insurance industry hated that if you're in South Florida and you can get citizens coverage at 30 to 40 percent less than the private market, you're going to do that. In 2022, Ron DeSantis caved to the insurance lobby. And we have to create an environment where people want to come in and compete for your business. You can't dump everybody on citizens' property insurance. The Florida legislator passed a series of bills that would overhaul insurance law. And Ron DeSantis started depopulating citizens' insurance. The goal was to kick people off of the insurer of last resort and get them back into the private market. But was so. So now it is kind of reversed. It's like, nah, we want them. Um, nah, the, the same, basically saying, no, we will actually now want some of these people to be on because we want them to pay all this money. It, it's, 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 it's crazy. Because now everybody's going, well, I can actually save money because Citizens is actually cheaper and I'm not going to be paying as much. So I might as well just go to Citizens anyway, even though I may still be kind of low risk. I still want to go with Citizens anyway. You know what I'm saying? But now the private insurance is like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. no, 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 no. Now we don't want Citizens. Now we want you all to be on private insurance. And I want you to think about not just with homeowners insurance, but also with uh, a public option. This is why I do not favor a public option. Because a lot of times, if you still have these corporate private insurers in place, they're going to either say, oh, well, we can dump all these people on, or if more healthy people start to go with the public option instead, because it is an option, it's going to be more affordable for them, then they're going to get mad and they're going to want to gut it anyway. Right. Which is essentially happening with Medicare right now. They're trying to privatize Medicare because they don't not want people to have Medicare. They want that money to be going to them because capitalists, they, you know, they essentially see what's going on with these these private insurance. I'm sorry, the public insurance. And they're like, well, that's money that they're also getting that we should be having so that they want that, too. So many major insurers denying coverage. Customers are stuck with companies that are a lot more risky. Yeah, particularly in the last uh, 10 to 15 years, national, large national insurers, the kind that you would recognize from commercials, we are farmers, bum, 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 bum. have pulled way back for the most part. And in their place are companies called domestics. These, these are smaller in-state companies uh, that tend to have far fewer resources. They, they aren't nearly as well capitalized. They're heavily reliant on reinsurance, which is insurance they buy for themselves. DeSantis is trying to get new companies into the state, but he isn't being very discerning. Enter Slide Insurance, a startup founded by one of the lawyers for Enron. Yes, that Enron. I knew that there were going to be mass insolvencies in Florida. So we raised a tremendous amount of capital to really kind of capitalize on market opportunities and provide new solutions to the homeowners. The CEO of Slide Insurance, Bruce Lucas, was thrilled about DeSantis' changes to insurance laws. The new bills made it harder for customers to sue insurers over unpaid claims. He created a bigger fund of reinsurance to protect insurers. That's the insurance 
for insurers. And most important, it handed Slide Insurance more customers. The Washington Post reported that businesses like Slide can cherry pick the policies they want, choose the properties that have the lowest amount of risk and reject the ones in flood or hurricane prone areas. Lucas laid it all out on a podcast called The Insurance Guys. You get to cherry pick the policies. Correct. You're, you are underwriting and cherry picking the best policies, leaving kind of the worst ones there. Sometimes policyholders don't even know they're being pushed off of their plans. As long as the new policy is less than 20% more than citizens' premium, they can be forced off of their policy. You know, you send out these notices and it gets mixed in with everybody's junk mail in the trash can it goes. Next thing you know, you've got 200,000 customers. That's crazy. You're getting put onto somebody else's plan all because you may have not neglected. And it's like, well, you have to opt out. No. And then you get put on this horrible policy. I'm going to say this. I was going to say this at the end, but I'm saying it now. We need a single payer homeowner's insurance in this country. Single payer. I am sick and tired of seeing these private insurance companies. We need single payer homeowner's insurance and housing for all. Dear God. Mm -mm -mm. God, these goons. Last year, Slide was approved to take over 250,000 policies from citizens. The bad news, it's about um, 4.3 times what I was quoted for citizens. The premium for the same level of coverage from Slide was $14,684. Look at that. The citizens is the public, it's the state run property insurance corporation. Slide is a private company. Look at the renewal premium difference. That's ridiculous. You're paying almost four times that price. They've also swooped in to buy out policies from insurers that have gone bankrupt or left the state, like United Property and Casualty and Farmers Insurance. This year, they provided a different option for me if I wanted to switch called Slide Insurance. That sounds shady. So just how risky is Slide Insurance? They aren't a publicly traded company, so it's hard to know all their finances. In interviews, Lucas touts the fact that Demotech gives them an A rating, but the more reliable Weiss ratings gives them a D plus, pointing out that they have low liquidity and capitalization. Reporter Jason Garcia thinks citizens should be expanded. A public nonprofit insurer does not have to earn a profit. That allows it to charge insurance that is more affordable. And two Florida representatives agree. Republican Spencer Roach, who survived Hurricane Ian himself, and Democrat Hillary Cassell, a former litigator for insurers, both think citizens should be available to all homeowners in the state. Think of this as the National Flood Insurance Program but instead of at the federal level, it's at the state level. Florida, at some point in the future, is going to embrace the idea of universal wind coverage. But they're up against a powerful political force that doesn't want to see citizens expand. Since 2019, when DeSantis was sworn in, the insurance industry has donated nearly $10 million to DeSantis and the Republican Party. Boom, there it is. This is why people like Ron DeSantis are not good for homeowners. Because he wants to partner with the private insurance companies, with the corporate parasites that want to have you buy the balls. That's who Ron DeSantis is. And yet some of you guys want to keep him in office? It's not working out for most homeowners and then guess what it's going to and if it doesn't affect you directly it will affect people around you and then it will affect you directly this is why people like ron DeSantis are dangerous for florida hmm. he's bought he's bought and the bills that DeSantis has passed since have almost all been handouts to the insurance industry. 
the the entire overarching strategy that Governor Ron DeSantis and the current Florida legislature have is to help private insurance companies make money in the hopes that benefits will trickle down to consumers. Okay, so what does this all mean for the average homeowner or renter? Florida can prove as a model for what not to do. States should provide affordable not-for-profit plans for residents that can't rely on private insurance. It's, it's, it's a risk, but um, I think it's one well worth taking. Um, paradise has a price. I'm, I'm hoping to live the rest of my golden years down here. I'm not going anywhere. And while these major insurance companies claim poverty, remember that in 2022, the CEOs of the top 10 insurance companies made a combined total of over $130 million. There's one more layer to this whole story. Climate change is increasing the likelihood of disasters that are driving up risks for insurance companies. But those same companies are literally adding fuel to the fire. Public Citizens Anne Perot writes that insurance companies, including State Farm and Allstate, have major holdings in fossil fuel companies. It's a feedback loop. That's what it is. So they're fueling climate change. Climate change actually makes it worse makes it more risky to own homes and the more higher risk on homes that means they get to bump up the insurance premiums and they get to bump up the deductibles meaning that they're making more money so then then they continuously fund the fossil fuel companies that are increasing climate change so it's a feedback loop it's a greedy feedback loop that actually helps them out in the end and who gets stiffed it's you, it's me, it's our kids and our parents that get stiffed. And a lot of people do not realize this. And this is why I continuously and will start calling for a single payer homeowner's insurance in this country. We no longer need these private insurers at all. We need a nationalized healthcare system and a single payer homeowner's insurance company in this country. No more private insurers. They need to be cut out of our system, period. State Farm is also part of ALEC, the group that has lobbied against emission restrictions. And for his part, DeSantis accepted almost $3 million from donors contributing to the climate crisis in 2022. And this year, he signed a bill that weakens environmental protections and bans construction of offshore wind turbines in state waters. What I found is people, when they start talking about things like global warming, they typically use that as a pretext to do a bunch of left wing things that they would want to do anyways. This year. Hang on. See, here's the problem with people like Ron DeSantis. When you try to do something that's really pro worker, really pro worker. He'll say, oh, that's just left wing, right? Like, for instance, when I was talking to Todd Schaefer, you were talking about worker co-ops and growing and worker ownership of their workplaces, right? Wouldn't that be nice if workers actually collectively own their workplaces and able to run it democratically so that all the profits go to all the workers so then it actually builds the workers up? Guess who will call that left wing? Ron DeSantis would say, well, that's just woke left wing. Even though it's a benefit to all workers. Ron DeSantis is saying to you in coded language that he does not give a damn about workers. He does not give a damn about you. He doesn't give a damn about me. The only people he gives a damn about are the people that live in places like Windermere and Isleworth here in Orlando. He gives a damn about the people who live in West Palm Beach. The Epstein's of Florida. That's who he cares about. He doesn't care about you or me. He just wants to lay it up in, in his governor's mansion in Tallahassee. That's who Ron DeSantis is. Ron DeSantis doesn't care about any of us. I don't care if you're white, black, brown, red, green, blue, polka dot. It doesn't matter. He doesn't care about you because you don't have the money for him to care about you. This is why I say walk away from both Democrat and Republican parties. Because somebody like Ron DeSantis is really a cancer for this state. The United States has already experienced 19 weather events that cost more than a billion dollars in recovery. 
We have to be honest about the impact of climate change, take efforts to fortify homes and cities, and start the work to transition to energy that doesn't use carbon. So shout out to More Perfect Union, man. They keep coming out with banger after banger on that one. And so, uh, yeah, I, I highly recommend people to start uh, pushing and talking about a uh, a single payer homeowners insurance across the country. We can call it home care for all, right? Because the thing is, like, people should not have to worry about homeowners should not have to worry about this. Now, as a renter, I honestly think that this could also indirectly help somebody like me. Because if homeowners insurance is not, you know, affecting homeowners in a horrible way, that means, you know, people will actually have more money to go into the economy. That means that they can have more money to spend on small businesses. They can have, you know, and then maybe we can start going into pro uh, property insurance, you know, that single payer as well. So let's say you got a mom and pop shop. They don't have to pay all this money to insure, you know, their business. So then they can do single payer business insurance. And they're not getting, you know, they're not getting raked over the coals for that, meaning that they can actually pay their workers more, meaning that they can actually give better benefits to their workers. See, 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 what, see where it's going? See where it's going? Because ultimately, it's about the caring of the workers. People like Ron DeSantis doesn't care. People like Joe Biden doesn't care. Kamala Harris doesn't care. I'm sorry. I mispronounced her name. Kamala Harris doesn't care. People like J.D. Vance and Tim Walz, they don't care. This is why I have independents on who are running. This is why I have third-party candidates on that are running. And it won't just be here in Florida. It will be throughout the United States. So please make sure to keep an eye on people who are actually fighting for workers and also, we need to organize and fight for ourselves. This also means going when it comes to ballot initiatives, citizen ballot initiatives, so that we can actually have direct democracy without actually having to go through politicians, too. So, yes, homeowners, especially a lot of you guys that are struggling out there, hang on. Help is coming. Thank you so very much for watching my channel, and I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfon. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. Forehead kisses and have a beautiful day.